on weak therefore strong we're talking about one of Zoe's genetic syndromes it's 2q23.1 micro deletion syndrome or MBD5 disorder and it's actually could be a genetic deletion duplication or mutation that causes this disorder so I made this video in part because my dad um, asked me to explain a little bit better what's going on in Zoe's body and so this is kind of a makeshift video because I did it quickly so if it's wiggly it's because I'm filming a slide show <laughs> and my husband just said let's not do this because he likes things to have high quality but I promise I'll make a better one and also I'll, this might get taken down because of um, copyright issues with some of the slides so I'll make something of my own so there's actually 23 pairs of human chromosomes and the 23rd pair is actually the sex chromosome X and Y so if you have XX you're a girl if you have XY you're a boy um, where Zoe's genetic syndrome lies is right here on chromosome 2 and you can see that each chromosome has uh, it's a, a two pair so it has two LLs so one LL two LLs and so um, with 2Q23.1 if just one of the arms of the chromosome is affected then it causes the syndrome um, that's called haploinsufficiency you have to have two working parts of the chromosome to make the protein so um, you're probably already if you're new to genetics you're probably already like what making a protein what does that mean so and here is the cell and this is um, inside the nucleus there's actually, this is the cell nucleus, inside the nucleus there's chromosomes, see all the chromosomes, so that coincides to the last slide, here's the chromosomes. And so when chromosomes, chromosomes actually contain DNA, and you can see this might look familiar, you probably have seen the, the helix of the DNA molecule. So it's all wrapped up into these chromosomes. And so whenever our body needs to make a protein, it uses DNA. DNA is a blueprint. It tells your body how to make the protein. What amino acids, which are the tiny building blocks of, of proteins, what amino acids to use. And so when your body needs to make a protein, it unravels the DNA from these chromosomes. And you can see the histones that are there. Histones are kind of like wheels that the DNA kind of sits on. Um, some things can act, interact with histones. And actually, MBD5 has been found recently to interact with histones. It recognizes when a histone is methylated. Um, methyls, methyl groups are a way of the body turning on and off DNA. And so part of the way that MD, MBD5 works is to know if a histone is methylated or not methylated. Um, methylated typically means off. And... Um, the less methylated something is, it typically means it's on. Not with all genes though, that's where it gets kind of crazy. Sometimes I feel for these geneticists. So again, here's another picture showing that a chromosome comes from the nucleus of the cell and whenever we need to make a protein, the chromatid or the chromosome is unraveled and you actually get to the DNA where the DNA can give you the blueprint to make a protein. So MBD5 is actually an epigenetic gene, and epigenetic means that um, it has rulings over other genes in the cell. It can turn on or turn off another gene within the cell. So right here is an arrow pointing to where 2Q23.1 would be. This is an entire allele of a chromosome. Um, this is the P arm, so some people might have, you might know someone who has a P deletion, um, or a Q deletion. This is the Q arm or the long arm of the chromosome. So um, when there's any amount of DNA missing from a chromosome, it has the potential to cause a problem with the protein that's being made. And if you think about it, that's because if you delete, um, well, we'll go to that in a second. If you delete something, then that information is not there, right? It's no longer there. And if you if you don't have information to make a protein, then you obviously can't make a protein. So um, another thing, though, that can happen 
is a duplication or a mutation. There's lots of stuff that can happen with DNA. Sometimes people ask me what causes a deletion and Zoe's deletion is de novo. Neither my husband or I are affected by this. We do not have a deletion. So most likely her deletion is a copying error. So during the time that her cells were replicating, her DNA just didn't get copied correctly. And so the next cell that was made was an identical cell to the one that got messed up. And so she, as she grew inside my stomach or inside my, you know, womb, then she ended up um, having multiple copies of the wrong type of DNA. So again, here's DNA. So this is what's all wrapped up and squished inside chromosomes so that they can actually fit inside a nucleus. And then when the body needs to make a protein, it makes this other type of nucleic acid called RNA. And then the RNA can leave the, the nucleus and go into the cytosol, which is another part of a cell, and it can make a protein. And so here's it making a protein. That's called translation. So, so say like if this is 2Q23.1 microdeletion syndrome, and this is the MBD5 gene, if we're missing all this part of the MBD5 gene, then whenever it's translated, we're gonna miss all of these nucleotides right here. And then um, whenever it comes down here to make a protein, which these little things like tyrosine, what's that one, glutamine, serine, um, I, what is that, isoleucine? I can't see right now. Um, so these coincide with amino acids. So if this is missing, then you're not gonna have these amino acids, and then this protein's gonna be made wrong, and when a protein's made wrong, it stops working. It doesn't work anymore. And so that's what happened inside Zoe's body, is her protein for MBD5 is actually not made at all, um, or in a reduced amount. I don't think anybody's actually tested her own ability to make MBD5, but it's in a smaller quantity than a typical person, and so it can't do its function. So what does MBD5 do, right? That's a big question. Um, so before we get to that, let's talk about the different ways that a gene can be affected. So it could be a deletion like Zoe where it's just missing some of the genetic inf information. Or it could be a duplication. We have several kids in our support group who have duplications, and they're actually affected in a similar way to Zoe. So if you have too much DNA, it can also damage your ability to make a normal protein. Um, you can have an inversion where the DNA is flipped upside down. And so then, again, you can't make a normal protein because the instructions are out of order. You can have a substitution where the wrong amount of DNA um, is, or the wrong type of DNA is substituted into the chromosome. And then you can have a translocation, and that's where a DNA from another uh, gene is translocated into the area that that the typical gene would be in. So any of these things can actually mess up how a protein is made. Okay, so what about MBD5? What does it actually do? Well, it actually helps with neurological function and growth and development, and how that works is its job is to recognize whether or not a DNA molecule has those methyl groups on it that I talked about. And so its job is basically to turn on or off the production of other proteins in a cell. So every time Zoe makes a new cell or any time that she's, um, her body's trying to make a protein related to neurological development, MBD5 just doesn't work properly. So it may or may not turn on or off a particular gene that's needed for uh, example for um, nerve regulation. So she happens to have motor delay um, she has problems feeding. She still has problems feeding. Um, she has a lot of problems with her muscle. She doesn't really have muscle rigidity. She actually has low tone, but Zoe has more than one genetic syndrome going on, so that might be the difference there. She does have lack of muscle coordination. Um, she still can't use, she's seven and she can't write. Um, she can't color or scribble. Um, she gets frustrated with that too. She has language impairment because language requires nervous, your nervous system to function and she's um, impaired with that too. So um, all these things here are, are pretty much neurologically related. 
Um, one interesting thing is about sleep disturbances is that kids who have MBD5 um, disorders actually don't sleep well, and there's a mouse study that shows that they don't make adequate circadian rhythm proteins. So the MBD5 protein that's being made isn't adequate enough to turn on the proteins for sleep, and so then they sleep horribly. Um, so you can imagine that we're all sleep deprived. So if I stumble over my words, <laughs> maybe because I'm sleepy. Um, so I guess that's it. That's pretty generalized information. I didn't want to go too in depth. Plus, they don't know a ton about this yet. Epigenetic genes are, are pretty crazy. It's a neat field to go into if you're interested in being a scientist. Um, I don't think I get enough sleep to go into that field right now. <laughs> and um, I feel like I'm kind of... Uh, I'm enjoying being Zoe's personal dietitian and caregiver, and it takes a large quantity of my time. So I guess that's it. And I hope you guys have a great day and help celebrate 2Q23.1 Awareness Day. Wear blue and post a picture of yourself in um, our support group. You can look up 2Q23.1 or MBD5 in Facebook, or you can do a hashtag MAND for um, if you're doing Twitter or Instagram or any of those things that require hashtags. I probably just screwed up because I don't really know about those platforms yet. <laughs> so I hope you have a great day. Um, there you go, Dad. That was for you. Love you. Bye.